New COVID-19 restrictions took effect this week in Alberta to combat a surge in cases. Indoor dining is banned and gyms have to close. Retail stores can operate, but at a very reduced capacity. Variants of the virus are driving up case numbers in the province. This line shows you the average over seven days creeping higher. You can see kind of at the end of the screen. Premier Jason Kenney rejects the idea the province should have imposed restrictions sooner. He says Albertans have to be more careful adhering to the restrictions. Are the new measures enough, though, to curb the third wave? Nahed Nenshi is the mayor of Calgary. Hi, Mayor Nenshi. Good to have you back on the program. Thank you for making the time. Thank you so much for having me. I have a number of questions, as, as you would expect, about uh, your political future and the announcement you made. But, but I did want to start with the COVID situation in Alberta and more specifically in your city. I, I think I've read it, Calgary accounts for nearly half of the, the variant cases, specifically active variant cases. What is your assessment of, of what's happening on the ground in Calgary right now? It's bad. It's really bad. Uh, we are seeing... <clears throat> extraordinary exponential growth. Uh, we have about 40% of our cases in Alberta now are variant cases. Uh, we've done a great job, I think, uh, the province has in vaccinating older people in long-term care centers. So we are seeing you know, fewer deaths and we're certainly seeing uh, fewer infections among older people, but it, that means younger people are getting very ill. Our hospitalizations are going up, our ICU rates are going up and we're trying to get as many needles and as many arms as possible. We've just opened a massive vaccination clinic at the convention center downtown. But ultimately, we're in a race. And I'm sorry to say right now we're losing the race. Do you do you think that uh, the vaccination strategy needs to pivot at all? I know, as you mentioned, I know that there's a mass I, one that opened. But, but the conversation in other parts I, of the country is about that right now as well. Yeah, I do. I do. I think that, uh, you know, the province made a number of pronouncements uh, yesterday about going backwards in, in our plan, but I'm not sure that plan is exactly right anymore. Uh, I think it probably is time for us to have a very serious conversation about closing the high schools again, not necessarily the younger kids, but the high schools, uh, which was effective in November, December. And on vaccination, I absolutely think that we've got, we have to go from an age-based vaccination now that we've got the most vulnerable older people vaccinated to getting all those frontline workers vaccinated, bus drivers, first responders, people who work in the food supply chain and grocery store clerks, teachers. Uh, and I, that's something that I'll be, have been pressing and will continue to press the provincial government to do. I was going to ask, have, have you spoken to the premier about that? Yeah, you know, he is... He, he says often that he's just interested in following the science. My argument is I think the science has shifted and I think it has changed and we have to be adaptive as we're looking at this crisis. Do you feel that he is not being adaptive? Well, you know, they've just going back and forth within an existing plan. And I think that the times call for more creative response. Are you optimistic at all that there will be one based on your conversations? Well, you know, last week we had a premier who said things are horrible, things are bad, we're going to overwhelm the public health system and I will therefore do nothing. <laughs> and then on Monday he uh, walked around the woods a lot, you know, talking about how he didn't really want to do anything, but he felt forced to do something. And today 15 of his MLAs have written a letter saying, why'd you do that? Um, so we, we need some very firm leadership on this. Let's put it that way. You sound uh, frustrated. You, you usually hedge, hedge your words a little bit more, if, I, if I'm interpreting it correctly. Are you frustrated? I'm worried. Uh, I'm worried because, look, yesterday we passed a really grim threshold. We lost our 2,000th person to COVID-19. Every one of those people we've lost was loved by somebody. They were family members. They were co-workers. And that's hit the community so hard. And my goal here is you don't keep the economy going if you're moving back and forth and closing things down and people have to be isolated. But also, we have to really not just say, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with those people who we've lost, but to commit ourselves hard to making sure we don't lose any more. Are you sympathetic to the uh, position he's put forth that there has to be sort of a middle ground that, uh, you know, that there are those MLAs, there are those people in Alberta who are critical of even going as far as he has gone, while on the other side you have people saying you're not going far enough. Look, I'm not the Premier. I don't have a caucus to deal with. 
Uh, but I do know that from the very beginning of this, my focus has been on the public health, on mental health, on economic health. But you got to make tough decisions in tough times. Uh, and, you know, over my 11 years in this job, <laughs> we've had a lot of tough times. Uh, and the one thing I've learned is don't worry about what feels politically right. Do what's right. And hopefully people will see what you're doing. You led me right into your the most recent tough decision that, that you had to make, and that is to uh, not run in, in the next mayoral race. What was the deciding factor for you? Oh, it's still so hard to say it. <laughs> um, uh, it took me a long time uh, to make that decision. And I'll tell you that for me, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people. A lot of people have given me great advice. But the hardest conversations are the ones I had to have with myself. And I really had to ask myself two very tough questions. Number one, is it irresponsible to leave now at such a critical juncture in our lives and in the history of our community? And number two, can I say that I fulfilled the promise that I made, the promise that my mom and dad, you know, drummed into me as a kid? You got to leave it better than you found it. And ultimately, you know, there were two things that really drove the decision. Number one is if we've learned anything in this, this crazy year that we've had, we have learned that there are a lot of voices out there that don't feel heard in our current systems, young voices, diverse voices, new voices. And maybe it's time to step aside and make some room uh, for those voices. But the other thing that I was reminded is, is what I said on October 18th, 2010, in a very hot and sweaty basement. I had a few fewer pounds and a lot more hair, and most of it was still black. <laughs> and I started that speech by saying, you know, today Calgary is different than it was yesterday. It's better than it was yesterday. And that's not because of me. It's because of you. It's because of citizens who have taken a risk to try and create a better future. And that's really what I was reminded about, is that it's not about me. Lucky me. I get to take the credit sometimes, and lucky me, I get to be the mouthpiece sometimes. But ultimately, it's about the work of 1.3 million citizens. It's about the work of the public servants who got this done. And you know what? There's a lot of people in the city who love this city, and they're going to continue to get this great work done with someone else in this chair. On the issue of, uh, or that question you asked yourself around responsibility, there are a lot of things that have changed for the better, but one thing, and of course this isn't attributable to any individual, but the, the economy is really struggling, right? Even, even if you subtract the pandemic, I've worked in Calgary, I've, I've lived in Edmonton, I know what a vibrant city it was, let's say seven, eight years ago, and, and how uh, much the economic downturn has imp impacted yeah. Calgary in particular. Did, did you, was that a struggle? Like the idea that you're yeah, leaving at that a kind massive, of massive, a massive struggle. You know, it's still super vibrant. It's still super exciting. The Economist still called us the best city in the entire Western Hemisphere. I'm very proud of that. You know, I always say that our valleys, uh, our, our valleys are other people's peaks. But at the same time, there's a lot of work left to be done. But one of the things I feel good about is even though today feels very grim, I know that when October comes, things will look a lot better. A lot of the uh, shoots that we planted are sprouting now in the film industry, in the tech sector, in alternative energy. Uh, I think that's very exciting. And I think that it really is a great opportunity for someone to take the reins and help us continue in that tremendously important work of diversification. Uh, before I let you go, Mayor, I'm in Ottawa. You've been on the show many times. I'd be remiss if I did not ask you, uh, although I've, I know you've said you have no short-term plans to enter the federal political scene. Let me turn the question around and ask, since your announcement, have any political parties reached out to you? And if so, which ones? Um, I've gotten a lot of texts over the last <laughs> few days. Uh, and who knows how serious they are. I did appreciate the one from Elizabeth May that said, Come join me in Ottawa and you can still wear purple. You don't have to wear green. Um, <laughs> I'm still wearing green. I'm wearing green today. It's the one day a year a good Calgarian will wear green other than St. Patrick's Day because it's green shirt day. But, you know, normally I wear purple and I wear purple because it is blue and red. And I'm not so sure there's a lot of room for blue and red. In other words, there's not a lot of room for purple in our partisan systems. But you know what? I'll tell you something. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. I, I'm a planner. I'm a strategist. I love knowing four, four moves ahead on the board. 
But I've actually done something uncharacteristic, which is I've opened myself up to the world. And I only have two criteria. I want to be part of the story of Calgary and Canada and our growth. And I'll have a lot to say over the next six months about some thoughts on the future of Canada. And number two, for me, service is my oxygen. I'm going to find some way to continue to serve outside of elected office. Um, so uh, I certainly don't see any move back into politics anytime soon. Never say never, but I don't see that. But I'll find a way to serve and, you know, hopefully find a way to continue to talk to you on the show, Bashy. Oh, I'm sure we'll as find a way. As long as you promise to finally change the name. Remember, <laughs> not power in politics, policy and governance, a very boring show oh, that I would only watch. Oh my well, ho hopefully that doesn't happen, but we will be glad <laughs> to welcome you back. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.